Welcome to the Myth and Magic Authors Podcast, folklore and fantasy topics aimed at creative storytellers. To write stories and challenge your brain with exciting ideas, delve into these presentations and reflections. See how fantasy realms are based on actual world history, legend, and lore. Study fairy tales, nature fables, and supernaturalism to engage in a jumble of concepts that will trigger your fancy and get you writing imaginatively. Now, here's your host, Neil Mack. Hello, fantasy fiction fans, and welcome to Myth and Magic. So this week I've been working hard on my NaNoWriMo National Novel Writing Month novel. It's the third in my series about Moondog, who's the investigator, the paranormal investigator, who is from Romani descent. And I've just gone past the 10,000 word stage, the 10K word stage over the weekend. So I was quite excited and doing well. And congratulations to all of my um, fellow competitors who are in the NaNoWriMo 2020 Challenge. Well done, all of you, for doing so well so far. But um, this week in Myth and Magic news, um, fairy doors have been in the news. Fairy doors. At the end of last month, in October uh, 2020, the local news in the Duchy of Cornwall in southwest England started to report that some rather special and very much loved fairy doors in a place called Coosbean Woods, Coosbean, C O O S E B E A N Woods, which is near the uh, river Kenwin by Truro, has been wantonly damaged, in other words, vandalised. The Fairy Door Trail was a beautiful place for children and families to enjoy. And a lot of effort was put into creating this very popular fairy walk. And uh, the idea of it is that they put little fairy doors, and local artists has put little fairy doors installed into the trees. And then it's up to the children to um, try to hunt these little doors down and find them. The vandalism was described as mindless antisocial behaviour, by the local uh, authorities. And, and it's worth remembering that this, this enchanting little path and all of its artistic contents were partly created by the residents of Mohay House, which is a care home. And it was for the enjoyment of the entire community. So these rotten scoundrels have smashed up something which um, was there for the pleasure and enjoyment of the entire community. Now, along the Fairy Door Trail, Uh, or near the trail, you can see St Dominic's Holy Well, and this was set up by the White Friars in the late 12th century. The White Friars are the Carmelites, by the way. And the medieval village of Kenwin, Keen means white, and so we think that the the medieval village of Kenwin has links with those Carmelite Friars. But the reason for the story getting back in the news this week um, uh, in the sort of like first week of November, is because the ferries themselves have now gotten involved. The mayor of Truro, he's a bloke called Bert Bisco, <laughs> nicely poetic name, decided to consult the fairy kingdom and he held an urgent meeting, sort of like a summit meeting, I suppose, with the mayor of the Truro Fairy Council. And the fairy council, I'm going to try and say it in Cornish for you, is the Fialor Malabar. So Mayor Bisco remarked that during the meetings with the Ferry Council, he tried to encourage contact and understanding between ourselves and the Ferry community. And he wanted to um, apologise for the uh, damage that was caused to their world. And he wanted to um, once again emphasise that um, he thought that the doors were an important part of our modern imaginary infrastructure. At the meeting, this meeting with the Truro Ferry Council, Truro's ambassador to the Ferry Kingdom, an artist called John Rowe, R-O-W-E, and he's the one who created the beautiful ferry doors that were damaged on the trail, told the um, mayor that he was disappointed, of course, to see this damage. And the woodland ranger, who's employed by Truro City Council, a chap called Chris Waddle, who is apparently in constant touch with fairy officials, he reassured the elementals that were at the meeting that the Truro City Council 
Council had acted under the Fairy Rights Act to ensure that these essential links between the visible and the invisible worlds are put back into order. We know that the fairies can deal with so much, he said, so we're glad to maintain that the doors that are there and also to make sure that they will stay there along the Enchanted Trail. Some people in the uh, city of Toro have suggested that maybe the CCTV should be installed to deter and prevent any further crimes. But the Truro mayor said our fairy friends are, of course, very shy. They are very rarely seen and they're very reluctant to see cameras mounted in their woods. But, of course, there are plenty of watchful eyes. In traditional Cornish fairy lore, Spriggans... S-P-R-I-G-G-A-N-S. It's not Spriggan, it's Spriggan or Spriggan. Are most usually associated with this area of Cornwall. The word derives from the Cornish Sparison, which means spirit or fairy. Spriggans are said to be found at old ruins and cairns and burrows. And the, the whole of Cornwall is littered with um, standing stones and they help to guard buried treasure in those places. And although they're very small, they're thought to be ghosts of giants. So they retain a gigantic strength and are able to swell to an enormous size. And that's probably why the British folklorist, uh, Catherine Mary Briggs, she described them as fairy bodyguards when she wrote her indexes of fairies. The green Spriggan, which is depicted by an artist called Marilyn Collins in this sculpture in Crouch End in London, is probably related to the green man, though. And the green man and the green Spriggan are probably ancient symbols of rebirth, and they are a memory of a pagan nature spirit that's often seen carved into stone in churches and in chapels and abbeys and in cathedrals. It's thought that Robin Hood and Peter Pan and even the great god Pan are all associated with the green man image, as is the green knight in Arthurian legend. So was the green knight also a Spriggan? It's very likely. Don't forget that um, King Arthur most likely had his court in the ancient kingdom of Cornwall. The green knight or Margek Kudur in Cornish, is sometimes described as a living vegetable or living vegetation. Now, think about that. Green knight, living vegetation, living vegetation, green man, green man, Spriggan. He was perhaps a living human at first, but was transformed by the uh, famous enchantress Morgan Le Fay into part vegetation, or... Possibly the other way around. Perhaps it was vegetable to start with and was transformed into man. We're never sure about that. But certainly Morgan Le Fay has a part to play in the story. But his role, once he was created, was to test and judge knights. And he also performed exorcisms. So, <laughs> in conclusion, I wouldn't like to be in the shoes of any of those little hooligans who smashed up the fairy doors of Cuspeen because they've now riled the Spriggans and they've probably annoyed the Green Knight. So I hope for their sakes they show some remorse for that antisocial desecration. And that's why fairy doors have been in the news this week. We're now in our second week of the National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo, and um, hopefully you're not hitting the wall or suffering writer's block. But I wanted to, perhaps a little bit ahead of time, I just wanted to deal, talk about dealing with the ingenuity jam and give you seven tips for dealing with creative blockage. Novelists talk about hitting the wall and they talk about suffering writer's block. But I think that writers are wrong in thinking that it's their writing that has somehow got stuck or log jammed or gummed up because it's not the words that are stopped coming. Because anyone can write a jumble of words. Anybody could put a whole load of words together that will make up a 50,000 word book. And even a computer can readily do it these days. No, it's a blockage in your imagination 
that has created this delay. It's not the diligent effort of writing that has become the main task, but it's a lack of brilliance in your conceptualization. And that's what it is. It's not actually writer's block, it's imagination block, it's creative block. And at the beginning of this process, you had a great idea, you had a wonderful concept, you had a grand design template, but after 10,000 words or maybe 20,000 words in your case, you started to lose your vision. Your mental image was not as good as when you first started. And it's your inventiveness and your ingenuity that has hit a wall. And it's not the tap, 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 tap of your fingertips on the keyboard. So how do you revitalize your imagination? Well, here are seven tips for dealing with creative blockage. Number one, take a trip into your world. Now this is a thought experiment, so you may have to play around with it to get to understand it. But here you will be a visitor to the world that you have created. So I want you to go to a scene, and it's obviously a scene that you've already written, not a scene you're thinking about, but a scene you've already written, and take a look around. What do you see? Who do you meet? Who most interests you and why? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? And when you've finished, I want you to come back home. So in other words, come back to the here and now. And then I want you to write a report about your experiences as if you're a journalist. Write a report, may be critical, may be favourable, but write a report as if you're a journalist. Number two, find the novelty of creation. Now for this, I want you to go to DeviantArt, it's D-E-V-I-A-N-T-A-R-T, or one word, uh, dot com, and tap in a criteria into their search tool. Now I suggest you search under the name of your character, or something from the title of your book, or a spell, or some kind of tool that your hero uses. But once you do that, put the search in, see what happens, and see what other creative minds are doing with that same word, and play, play around with it. Put your protagonist in, put your antagonist in. Number three, alter your pondering habits. You often hear entrepreneurs business entrepreneurs saying things like hey let's approach this from another direction or hey let's see this from a different perspective and that's because they are seeing the project through the eyes of a creator stroke developer and not through the eyes of a customer and they need to see through the eyes of a customer because otherwise they can't see whether the concept is actually worth continuing with. So they tend to reorientate their perspective to come up with fresh ideas. And I think it's a good idea for a novelist to do the same thing. Now, it would be nice to share your ideas with your clients. And of course, if you're a novelist, your clients are your readers. But I don't know if you would be brave enough to do this at a very early stage in the development of your work. And artists, as I'm sure you know, rarely like to have their work seen until it's completed. I know I don't. But you could get into the head of a potential reader. You are an imagineer, aren't you? So try to get into the head of a potential reader right now. And when you become a reader, I want you to ask some basics. Where is this story going? Should the main character change? What do I like about the story so far? What would make me keep reading? And what would make me put this book down? And what would make me cry? And what would make me happy? And what would make me shriek? And what would make me so, so, so pleased that I would want to tell the whole world about this book? Number four. Focus your creative energies. Now, I know you're writing and I know you're writing a lot, and I know that that's good. But it's not the only creative thing that you do, is it? Yes, you are a word maker. So why not scribble out some words, scribble out some new words? And I would like you to get yourself a new ink pen. And I've recently recently written a report about that on my website. 
Milmac, N E I L M A C H, all one word, dot me, M E. I've written a report about purchasing an ink pen and I'd like you to write some notes by hand. Now use your ink pen to start and keep a ideas notebook. And this is where you would jot down the things that come to mind. But the second thing I'd like you to do is think about this. Make yourself a deck of cards and 52 would be desirable, but 20 will do. But I'd like you to make it an even number. And I'd like you to make one card for each character or a card for each item or a card for each location in your story. So in the end, you'll have a set of custom tarot cards. When you've done that, and I would like you to uh, do a picture on each one, which represents the character or the item or the location in your story. And you could, of course, you can add any other decoration that you wish. Have a have some fun with it. But when, once you've done that, you could play with those cards. You could shuffle them. You could deal out six, and you could see what happens. It would give you inspiration. Number five. Develop imagination in other ways. I ask you, have you already completed your playlist for your project? Because it's recommended by NaNoWriMo that you do a playlist for your project. These are the songs and pieces of music that have inspired you or will inspire your story. Now, you should probably publish these onto either SoundCloud or Spotify. And the reason that you're publishing them to the bigger world is because you're making a commitment. You're making a commitment to your imagination. And that's an important thing. And of course, once you've put enough on, you can listen to those sounds and it will give you that spur to get going again. And also, I ask you, have you already started your mood board on Pinterest? because you're supposed to have started a mood board. And once again, NaNoWriMo recommends that you do. This is where you pin up inspirational pictures and images and maybe graphs and charts and maps and other things that will inspire you and will inspire your story. Now, if you've done both these things, well done. You get a big gold star for that. Well done for doing your mood board and well done for putting in your playlist, but you do need to update them. So make sure that you go there now and update your lists. Number six, allow stillness. Now, I'd like you to give yourself enough quiet time. And I want you to ask yourself, have I given myself enough quiet time? How can you expect the most complicated regions of your brain to function if you don't give them room to breathe and think? Now, I don't expect you to meditate by candlelight in a yoga position, although you can if it helps. But on the other hand, I do suggest that you consider at least 20 minutes a day of quiet time where you deliberately shut out the noise of the world, no phones, no interruptions. And I would like you to let the stillness feed your spirit because when your spirit is still, your creativity will flow. Now, I know this is a difficult thing to do in a modern world, and perhaps it's even more tough now in 2020, but it's a discipline that I'm sure will offer you some benefits. If you need to, you should put on some noise cancelling headphones and you should schedule into your working day 20 minutes of stillness. Number seven, my last tip for helping you deal with creative blockage is to invest in creative play. Children have natural imaginations and they're not defeated by the limitations of things like science and common sense and rationality. But how do we get our childhood imagination back, those unlimited parts of our imagination? Well, a good way to do this is to play. Play is part of the creative process and sometimes we forget how important it is to our creativity. So I'd like you to head over to a major e-commerce site, and there are several to choose from. I'm not going to tell you which one to go to. And I want you to buy yourself a gift. So go ahead. You deserve it. Have a little gift in this second week of NaNoWriMo. And here are the best. And I think the most important one, the one which you definitely should do if you're a writer, is get yourself a paper making kit. These are quite cheap, under $10, and you can learn to make your own paper and make your own paper. 
okay, it's going to take a while to make one sheet of paper, but that sheet of paper doesn't have to necessarily be for part of your written work. It could be a really nice bookmark, for example, or it could be a beautiful quote from your book. Get yourself modelling clay and model some of your characters. Make yourself a bath bomb kit. You can get bath bomb kits quite easily from quite a lot of stores and they're under 10 bucks. And then make yourself some bath bombs and then go and lay in the bath for your period of stillness. And you can also get yourself a decorate your own water bottle. And this is sensible because obviously you do need to um, make sure that you're hydrated. So it's important to drink water all the time as you're working. And it's nice to actually create your own uh, water bottle. And of course you can actually, because you're personalising, you can either put on your character something about your book or maybe the title of your book onto your own water bottle and then share that on Instagram or Twitter or any other um, social network. Also, another idea is pom-pom making kit. Pom-poms can be made by adult men as well as young girls. It's not a gender-specific thing. And pom-poms can be added to the bottom of bookmarks. And there's also kits that you can get which um, you can make hand puppets with. So you could make hand puppets of your characters, of your hero or your antagonist. And there's also mini kits available to make animal candles. So you could make um, some candles which reflect or respond to some of the ideas or characters in your book. And finally, why don't you get yourself a kit to make balloon animals? So that's it. If you've got your own tips and your own advice and your own examples and your own suggestions, then please tweet me at Neil Mac, N-E-I-L-M-A-C-H, all one word, and make sure you keep those little words rolling in. And good luck with your novel and good luck with your project. Well done to all of you. And my final words on this are keep your imagination healthy. Thank you.